Hello, and welcome to Top Story Daily Edition. I'm JNS Editor-in-Chief Jonathan Tobin. Thanks for joining me for another discussion on the most pressing issues in the Jewish world. Please like, subscribe, and give us good reviews when you listen to the show. Now let's get started. If you were wondering whether Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was just a publicity-hungry leftist provocateur or a serious politician determined to do everything to advance her career on the national stage, you now have your answer. In an act of political triangulation worthy of former President Bill Clinton, the founding member of the leftist congressional squad, popularly known as AOC, managed to take a stand against anti-Semitism and earn the applause of the liberal Jewish establishment while being bashed by even more extreme Jew haters. That AOC did this after repeatedly employing rhetoric about Israel's war against Hamas, including falsely accusing the Jewish state of genocide that has helped fuel the current surge in anti-Semitism throughout the United States, illustrates not just her hypocrisy and chutzpah, but also that she is a savvy political player. For years, she's been an avid supporter of the stands of squad colleagues, Representatives Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, as their open anti-Semitism became a national disgrace, as well as an indication of how she and fellow progressives were taking over the Democratic Party. Her ability to flip the narrative about her anti-Israel incitement and demonization of the Jewish state is a testament both to her political acumen and the willingness of some of the people whose job it is to fight anti-Semitism to stay in sync with their allies on the Democratic left wing. But it's also a sign of her ability to take advantage of an opportunity to position herself closer to the mainstream, thanks to the intolerance of left-wing extremists. Since the October 7th massacres in southern Israel, AOC has been a reliable Israel basher and a key part of the left-wing coalition that has been pushing President Joe Biden and his administration to betray the Jewish state and let Hamas win the war. But for some on the far left, that wasn't good enough. Videos of the congresswoman being harassed by extremists for supposedly not being sufficiently anti-Israel went viral and wound up getting more publicity than her positions and statements, making it clear that she was firmly in the anti-Zionist camp, along with her pals Omar and Talib. Such attacks were annoying, but they also served her purpose, as she eyes a future in national politics. That might mean an attempt to challenge Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, also of New York, when he runs for re-election in 2028, or even a long-shot run for the presidency that year, or in the future. Having staked out ground as a fierce opponent of Israel and an inveterate basher of the APAC pro-Israel lobby in terms that are indistinguishable from traditional anti-Semitic tropes, AOC ought to be radioactive to mainstream Jewish groups. But even after the events of the last eight months, as the anti-Israel progressives did all they could to help Hamas and to undermine support for the Jewish state's right to self-defense, some of the people tasked with defending the Jews are still eager to help their erstwhile allies. A prime example of this is Amy Spitalnik, head of the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, the umbrella of Jewish community relations groups across the nation. As I predicted when she was chosen for her job last year, Spitalnik is, even after October 7th, still more interested in fighting for the progressive political agenda and partisan democratic goals than defending Israel and the Jews. So it was unsurprising that she joined AOC, along with Stacey Burdett, a former ADL official, on the live stream webinar broadcast on X titled Anti-Semitism and the Fight for Democracy. The title was the tip-off that the purpose of the program was to promote the Democratic Party's main 2024 talking point rather than doing something about Jew hatred. The point being that liberal groups like the JCPA agree that the only way to defend democracy is to keep the Democrats in power and regard the fact that it is the political left that is the main source of contemporary anti-Semitism as an inconvenient fact that may be an obstacle to achieving that objective. 
So Spitalnik and Burdett were happy to provide cover for AOC to try and wiggle the progressives out of their current dilemma, where there is no longer any doubt about their being primarily responsible for an unprecedented surge in anti-Semitism. In order to do that, AOC had to be willing to do something that the leader of her party, the supposedly moderate pro-Israel President Joe Biden, has not been willing to do, denounce the anti-Semites in his own party. As I noted earlier this year, Biden has been unwilling to have a sister-soldier moment with the anti-Semitic wing of his party and has instead been kowtowing to the Democrats' far left and Arab-American elements as he sought to shore up support for his re-election effort among his party's base. Sensing an opportunity to position herself closer to the political mainstream without actually having to moderate her positions, AOC pounced. During the course of the webinar, she made a statement that made her appear as if she is an opponent of anti-Semitism, while not budging an inch in her anti-Zionism and willingness to smear Israel as a monstrous country guilty of genocide against innocent Palestinians. Anti-Semitism hate and violence against Jews because of their identity is real, and it is dangerous, said Ocasio-Cortez, earning herself praise not just from her accomplices Spitalnik and Burdett, but even from a pro-Israel stalwart like Abe Foxman, the former head of the Anti-Defamation League, in the days when it prioritized the fight against anti-Semitism rather than the cause of the Democratic Party, as is the case with his successor, CEO and National Director Jonathan Greenblatt. Indeed, Foxman wasn't the only one duped by AOC into lauding her stand because of the belief that even the most minimal acknowledgement that anti-Semitism exists on the left seemed a breakthrough. However, her point was that anti-Semitism undermined the progressive agenda. Anti-Semitism is an assault on our values as Americans, and especially as progressives, she said. Anti-Semitism is also a threat to a community that is a vital partner in our struggles against injustice. So when the Jewish community is threatened, the progressive movement is undermined. That's why we reject it as fiercely as we reject and look for misogyny, Islamophobia. Yes, Islamophobia. And in any bigotry or any form of bigotry or discrimination in any space that we occupy, she went on. Right now, anti-Semitism is on the rise in America and across the world. Acknowledging that fact does not take away from fights for liberation. It actually advances them. The congressman made clear that she was merely distancing herself from the more vulgar forms of Jew hatred, like the rampage of pro-Palestinian demonstrators outside the White House, anti-Israel mobs protesting in front of a Wall Street exhibit about the October 7th murders at the Nova Music Festival, the targeting of Jews during a day of rage on the New York City subway, and the red paint vandalization of the homes of officials associated with the Brooklyn Museum. In essence, what she was trying to do was to separate herself from the thugs on the streets while still opposing the existence of the one Jewish state on the planet. She also essentially backs efforts to ensure that the genocidal and fascist terrorists of Hamas are allowed to escape accountability for atrocities on October 7th and go back to governing Gaza and working towards their goal of destroying Israel. It is also important to say, she said, here in this moment and during that conversation, the criticism of the Israeli government is not inherently anti-Semitic and criticism of Zionism is not automatically anti-Semitic, she added. Of course, criticism of any Israeli government is not anti-Semitic, but criticism of Zionism is indistinguishable from an effort to deny Jews' rights that no one would think of denying to anyone else. This statement gave her, and by implication other progressives, a pass for engaging in the worst kind of libels against Israel and demonizing its efforts to defend itself against those who see October 7th as just a trailer for what they wish to do to the rest of Israel. No responsible Jewish leader should be providing cover for a member of Congress who has done so much to advance the anti-Israel cause. But more important is the need for those who pretend to lead the Jewish community to understand that the ideological basis for the open anti-Semitism in the streets of America's cities and on college campuses is to be found in the beliefs about critical race theory, intersectionality, that an avowed Marxist like AOC calls fights for liberation. 
a condemnation of anti-Semitism that doesn't acknowledge that the extremism and violence against Jews so ubiquitous now, right now can be directly linked to the promotion of these ideas is useless. As has been abundantly clear for years but can no longer be ignored since October 7th, the mindset that sees the world divided into two groups of white oppressors and people of color or their victims locked in a perpetual race war inevitably falsely labels Israel and Jews as the former. The fact that the JCPA and ADL have refused to renounce their endorsement of these toxic, woke, progressive agenda items, even as they acknowledge the spike in anti-Semitism from their former allies on the left, shows just how morally bankrupt these organizations and leaders like Spitalnik and Greenblatt have become. There should be no pass given to politicians, academics, or anyone who pretends to oppose anti-Semitism while still opposing Israel's existence and right to exist. And none for those like AOC, whose main goal since October 7th has been to prevent the elimination of Hamas, those progressives who don't want to dirty their hands in the way the mass thugs do aren't opposing anti-Semitism. The mobs in the streets may have gone further than the congresswoman and other progressives are comfortable with in expressing their hatred for Israel and the Jews. Still, their end goals are no different from hers and anyone else who is working for a victory for Hamas. Her advocacy advances their cause, whether she or not, she or they are willing to admit it. Those who see AOC as the future of the Democratic Party probably aren't wrong. Most Democrats aren't in agreement with her extreme positions on foreign policy or even the environment and Green New Deal measures that would impoverish the nation and harm middle and working class Americans while leaving elites like AOC untouched. But the progressives dominate the younger generation of Democratic activists and the party base. That she is disassociating herself from the worst excesses of her allies while still engaging in anti-Semitic tropes about APAC and Zionism, is no reason for Jews who purport to speak for American Jewry to back her deception. Indeed, it says more about the collapse of Jewish leadership at a time when it's needed most. Either way, AOC's determination to act in a manner that will allow her to advance her toxic causes and personal ambitions is a warning for those who care about not just Israel and the Jews, but the future of America. The more influential a Marxist extremist like her grows, the more dangerous a place this country will be, not just for Jews, but for the cause of liberty itself. Thanks for listening. Please remember to tune in every day for Jonathan Tobin Daily Edition and every week for Think Twice, my hour-long JNS TV program. Whether you're listening to us on Apple, Google, Spotify, or any of the other podcast platforms, or on the JNS YouTube channel, please like and or subscribe to JNS, click on the bell for notifications, and give us good reviews. Please write to us at editor at JNS.org and let us know where you listen or watch the show and what you think about it. And remember, keep reading and thinking for yourself.